In the Lord I'll be ever thankful. In the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God, do not be afraid. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. So if you got kids at the house, call them in. I've got a wonderful message for them today. It's going to be fun and enjoyable. So I look forward to uh, preaching God's word to them. It's good to see you boys and girls here today. I have something that I enjoy. It's my one of my favorite instruments in the whole world. It's called a kazoo. 
and everybody can play one. All you have to know how to do is hum, hum, and you go, and it's just wonderful. You hum a song and, and you play it in the kazoo. Now we are told in scriptures that we are to rejoice and celebrate God's love, God's presence. Yeah, we're supposed to get together and celebrate. Now, how do we celebrate? Well, we sing and we're supposed to crash the cymbals, but I don't have cymbals. We're supposed to play the lyre or guitar, but I don't have a guitar. The harp, but I don't have a harp. But we're supposed to also blow the trumpets. Well, this kazoo could be like a trumpet. We can blow it and praise God by celebrating on the horn, the kazoo, the trumpet. It was really fun in church this past Sunday because I had my kazoo and we sang a song that everybody knew and they enjoyed it so much. It was so good to see the smiles on their face. It was so good to see the joy bubbling up from their hearts. We sang a song that maybe you know, this little light of mine. I'll give you the note that we start on, okay? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. We sang that song and everybody was so happy. We were praising God. And I hope that you can too. So I'll play the second verse on the kazoo and you sing it, okay? enjoys it when you sing. God enjoys it when you praise him, whether it's on the horn or with your voice. God loves it. And God loves it because God loves you. And I hope one day that I'll get to see you when you come to church. I've got kazoos. And if you come to church, I'll give you one. I've always got a bunch. So we'll make it a point. We'll get you a kazoo, and I'll teach you to play. Will you pray with me? Thank you. Lord God, I pray that every one of these boys and girls who are watching would praise you, would sing praises to you, and I pray, Lord, they would desire to know you. Bless them and keep them in all that they do. And may they always love you because you sent Jesus, your son, to save them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is Pastor Rick Labob from Love's United Methodist Church, extending to all who are watching an invitation to come and gather with us on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for worship. Come and praise God with us. I look forward to seeing you here. Uh, and again, thank you for watching, but we would sure love to have you. We're at uh, Main Street in Walkertown, North Carolina. So come on by. We'd love to have you. God bless you and keep you. Welcome to our online praise and worship. Let's begin with prayer. Almighty God, we're so thankful for the blessings of life and this day. We thank you, Lord, for loving us so that you send your son Jesus to die upon a cross to save us from our sins. 
Lord, we ask for your guidance and blessing during this time of worship so that all that we do would be pleasing unto you. Fill us, Lord, with your spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture for today is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 105, beginning with verse 1, going through verse 7. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek their Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and his judgments he pronounced. O oh, descendants of Abraham, his servant. O oh, sons of Jacob, his chosen one. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. I recently watched a Turner Classic movie that was released in 1965. It was set during the Civil War in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. It was about the Anderson family and they owned and would work to farm there. Charlie Anderson, he was the patriarch of the family. He was the father. And every day at the, supper at the supper table, he would pray. Lord, we cleared this land. We plowed it, sowed it, and harvested it. We cooked the harvest. It wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be eating it if we hadn't done it all ourselves. We work dog bone hard for every crumb and morsel, but we thank you, Lord, just the same for the food we're about to eat. Amen. Jimmy Stewart played Charlie Anderson, and he's always been a favorite actor of mine. But this prayer was just so unlike Jimmy Stewart. But this prayer has no praise or thanksgiving for God. Instead, it's a tribute to all that the Anderson family has done to provide for themselves. Eight times in this short table prayer, the word we is used. And nowhere is God honored for what miracles took place, for the good land plowed, for the good seed sown, for the beautiful harvest picked, or the nourishment received to provide for the healthy bodies to do all of that worthwhile work. Today's psalm is a prayer of thanksgiving for what God has done, for what God has done in the psalmist's life, in David's life, in Israel's life. God is magnificent. God is wonderful. God does all these wonderful and good and great things. Are we thankful for them? And one of the ways that we're thankful is to give praise to God and to come and worship God. It's best, how do we worship God? How do we praise God? Well, first, I think it's, it's really well defined in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 when the Ark of the Covenant was returned to Jerusalem. And here are a few of those thankful words. Give praise. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Speak his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Tell everyone what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Celebrate. That's right. Look to the Lord and his strength. 
Seek his face always in all situations, in all circumstances. Look to the Lord and trust in his strength, in his power, in his might. Remember the wonders he has done. Oh, Israel, remember how he rescued you from slavery in Egypt. How he led you through the, the dried sea. Through the wilderness, how he fed you with bread from heaven, with quail. Remember those good miracles and the judgments that he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord, your God. Worship him. Celebrate him, rejoice in him, love him, praise him. Yes, the Lord God is worthy of our praise. The difference between David's prayer and Charlie Anderson's prayer is King David remembers and celebrates what God has done. In song and praise with the, the lyre, a stringed instrument. With the harp, another stringed instrument. With the sound of cymbals and the blast of trumpets, the people were to remember what God has done. It's a celebration. We are to rejoice. To have joy in our hearts for what God has done for us. We are to faithfully proclaim our thanksgiving. Prayerfully and thankfully praise the Lord our God. And to gather together. To worship together. To lift our hearts. To lift our voices in song and praise. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Not what you have done, not what I have done. But to sing praise for what God has done. But sometimes we're like Charlie Anderson and we forget what God has done. So many times we become self-focused, we become internalized. And we think high, more highly of what we have done than what God has done. We're not to be forgetful people. We are charged by God to remember. To be a body of people gathered together intentionally. To worship and praise the Lord our God. To praise him for specific purposes, for the wonders he has done, for the miracles he has done, for the judgments that he has made. Remembering and praising God for what God has done, not just for the world, but for us specifically. Remembering and praising God for doing what we cannot do ourselves. And what would that be? We have the power, we have the freedom of will to sin, but we do not have the power nor the freedom to save ourselves from that sin. Do you remember when you first came to believe that Jesus was more than a story? That Jesus was more than just uh, a, about a man in a book? That Jesus became real. Do you remember when that happened in your life? Oh, it's magnificent when you can. It's magnificent when you do. For one young lady, it was while she was sitting on her bathroom floor. Why she was sitting on the bathroom floor, I don't know. But she was sitting there on her bathroom floor reading her Bible. And she read specifically from Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. 
Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And this young lady took that to heart. She began to believe what the word of God said to her. She took it to heart and she gave her life to Christ. And today she is a pastor of the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the world. We have to remember what God has called us to as believers in Jesus Christ is important. When we remember what God has done, it keeps God fresh in our hearts in our lives. When we remember what Jesus did for us, he died on a cross for us. It keeps him fresh in our lives. And we need that freshness. We need, even through the most difficult times, to know that the presence of God, the presence of Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit is with us. Is with us. Forgiveness and reconciliation are born from a heart that remembers and loves what God has done. It is a truly thankful heart that longs for the restoration that only God in Jesus Christ makes possible. Remember, God loves you. God loves us so much. Remember that those who believe in their hearts that Jesus is Lord have eternal life. When we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, we are remembering in the words of the prayer of great thanksgiving what God has done for us, what Jesus has done for us, and what the Holy Spirit is doing for us even now. When we receive this holy meal, this gracious gift from God, we remember that Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross so that we might be forgiven. Remember, it was because of what Jesus did and not by anything that we have done or could have done on our own behalf for ourselves. But we are incapable of redeeming ourselves. We must remember all that God has done. We must remember and not forget to say thank you. And we say thank you by gathering together to worship and praise the Lord our God. We remember and say thank you by singing our praises. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. That is not just an Easter statement. That is our statement because we are an Easter people. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Blow the trumpets. Crash the cymbals. Make a joyful noise to the Lord and worship the Lord your God. We are called to do that. We are called to gather. We are called to give glory to God, to God our Father, and to the Son, Jesus, and to the Holy Spirit, who lives within us today, who makes us aware of all that God has done, of all that Jesus has done, it is the Holy Spirit that inspires us to remember. Glory be to God. Amen.